Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We cover everything major league from spring training to the World Series. We've got your favorite club covered from New York to Boston to L.A. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Conference Baseball Podcast, where we discuss and recap the news of the week in Major League Baseball. As always, I'm Jeremiah. And I'm Ben. How's it going? It's going pretty good, man. Uh, yeah, last few shows of the week. Yeah, how was your how was your Wednesday shows, your base, your football shows without oh, Alex solo? doing yeah, them yeah, solo? They, they, how was uh, that? It was a it was quite an experience. It was a lot different to do it by yourself. Um, I'm pretty sure you just had the same experience doing your sports shows. As well, it's yeah. Different. I just did my I just did my sports shows. Uh, Alex, he works here. He's on vacation. So one thing I realized is that you Quote have to unquote, be vacation. That's vacation. But anyways, you have to, one thing I noticed is you have to be a lot more precise. You kind of have to take your time a little more because you don't have a bath back and forth exchange like say you and I would. So you kind of have to take your time a little bit. But it was it was not a not really much of an adjustment. Other than that, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. You have to like take your time you know kind of uh describe a little more detail uh i kind of compare it to like um uh, writing a print article you know how you have the little details in the background kind of like that a little bit yeah. okay yeah, yeah. I've, I've done yeah hundreds of those so i i know exactly yeah. how you feel anyways we're not going to talk about that we're here at the baseball podcast so we have a full two shows planned for you today our first one we're going to be talking about the minnesota twins just recently fired their gm paul Mo- Paul Molitor no, is going no. to step in for Terry Ryan. Mm-hmm. So Terry Ryan just just fired. Going to be talking about Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers. Kershaw has a setback with his back injury. And could miss the season. And yeah, could. Could be out for a while. Yeah. And they also had some more injuries since we've been done with the All-Star break here. Then we're closing out with Prince Fielder recently going to the DL, having quite a bad injury himself. And then former AL Cy Young Award winner for the Seattle Mariners, Felix Hernandez, coming back from the DL. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we got some uh, guys getting injured, and we got some guys coming back for you yes, guys to yes. be uplifted here because we don't want to end on a injury depressing note. We so. want a, a comeback story. We want a Felix comeback Felix is coming yes. back from the deal, exactly. so that's how we're going to end it. Like what Kujai said, don't call it a comeback. All right, let's get started. So right. <laughs> while that's going to be our ending, we're going to be starting here with the last place Minnesota Twins firing their GM, Terry Ryan, just recently a few days ago. They did fire him, and now they're bringing in Paul Molitor, he's going to be the interim manager on an interim basis. Jeremiah, what did you think of the deal? What did I think of uh, them firing Terry Ryan or them bringing in Paul Molitor? Well, we're going to talk about both, but we'll okay. start with Ryan. Okay, yeah, I, I'm i actually not really surprised. You know, this team is in last place after having kind of a pretty solid season last year. You know, they were fighting for a wild card spot, you know, pretty much this time last year, last season. Uh, you know, but they're in a also in a tough division, the AL Central. You know, they're in a division with the Indians, the, the Tigers, Orioles, White Sox, White Sox. Yes, and you know, it, it was hard. It was hard to compete against those teams this year, but I, I'm not surprised because it's kind of like you know, Major League Baseball. You're kind of, I. It's not the same as the NFL when you're in a win now approach, kind of in a way, but. You know, after the season that the Twins had last year, you know they were pretty. They're pretty close to Walker's spot. And yeah, last year, I think they went the, eighty-three and seventy-nine. Yeah, yeah, they were fighting. Like I said previously, they were fighting for a wildcard spot this time last year, and then they were in there until probably September. So it was, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised by it because you know the way that this team has performed since the start of the season. And remember, this it took. A while for this team to win a game um for for a while to the start and it yeah i'm just not surprised by that um but 
only Atlanta has a worse record than him. So, yeah, so it's, so, so it's that's you could what say, they have going for him. You could say he's definitely worthy, definitely not a good team. Assistant GM Rob Antoni will replace Ryan on an interim basis, and the owner and CEO of the Twins, Jim Poland, referred to Ryan's firing as something that was difficult, it was painful, and not obvious. He released that statement earlier on Monday. Longtime Twins catcher Joe Maurer, he said it was a difficult day. There's a lot of people hurting in here. Ryan had a hand in why everybody is in this room, and I've known him for a long time. So definitely a tough day, something that maybe not everyone was a, a fan of, something they did not want to do, but something they felt like they had to do starting starting fresh. It's With sports, you really can't fire the players, or at least not all at once. You've, a lot of times you fire managers, coaches, and then the next step above that is the GM because they're really the ones who are – kind of developing helping develop players pick them draft them sign players so that's basically what the twins are doing maybe starting fresh here so yeah and uh you know ryan kind of built you know the farm system for the twins the past couple of years uh, you know they got prospects such as miguel to know who is in the active you know he's on the big league roster now byron buxton who is been considered the top prospect in baseball for some time past couple of years and you know he's been up and down the majors and minors past couple of seasons i uh, you know jose barrios who is regarded a top pitching prospect he didn't have success you know to start his major league career um but could get another chance later this season and you know he's projected to be like their ace of the future um you know other prospects that they have you know it, they built a really good farm system and you know ryan was a huge part of that but the fact that the product now on the field uh just wasn't producing performing um they weren't just selling tickets they it was just hard product to sell and that's kind of like what happened to that's why it happened to ryan that's why i'm not surprised it happened but I'm kind of surprised as well because of the farm system they're kind of building there in a way. And don't forget about Max Kepler. Uh, he's been uh, on a really good tear lately, and he's he came up from the Major League Farm System as well. So, yeah. Yeah, the Twins are they're in the middle of their fifth losing season in the last six years. The only really exception to that was last year. They had a good year. They really battled for a wild card spot. So I, I feel like people thought that maybe the Twins would be that, that team this year to sort of make that jump from contention to a playoff team. And possibly, really, the people in that organization thought that as well. And without that happening, I think you can sort of contribute that to the firing of Terry Ryan here. Also, they he handed out a lot of money to some big-name pitchers like Irvin Santana, Ricky Nolasco, Phil Hughes, formerly of the Yankees, and none of them have really panned out. So those decisions definitely hurt Ryan's resume in a way and just building off last year really have a disappointing year when teams thought that they would be really really good has really benefited to firing him in a way so and the other uh transactions that ryan has made that kind of backfired well i wouldn't say backfired but I kind of haven't kind of role in him getting yeah, getting let go that kind of didn't really pro progress as fast as you know he thought it would uh, you know when they signed this uh south korean slug you know uh, Byung Ho Park. I'm hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> yeah, Byung Ho Park. Byung Ho Park. Um, you know, when they decide to hold on to Trevor Plouffe, uh, he even though he's been injured the past couple of years, you know, he's on and off again. And they decided to move uh, Miguel Sano to right field uh, from third base. You know, and yeah, so no, you can say maybe the Sano move to the outfield was we kind of saw that coming. Um, but it, the other moves haven't like panned out because of the uh, because of the way the team's been performing, you know. Yeah. So uh, Anto Antonio, who's going to be moving into the interim role, he's spent the last 29 years in the Twins organization, as well as nine as an assistant GM. So he definitely has experience. He knows what it means to be a GM, although he is just being an assistant. He's now filling an interim role for the time being. So they, I think the Twins definitely are. It's definitely not taking a step back because they have people that are experienced enough to fill the position. You bring in Paul Molitor. They definitely have experience there, and they, maybe they can build towards the future. We'll see what the Minnesota Twins have to do here. Okay, well, back to what I was saying about, you know, Terry Ryan's trends, you know, like him keeping Trevor Plouffe, signing Park, uh, moving Miguel Sano to the outfield. 
Well, Miguel Snow actually got injured this season playing the outfield, and then he got moved back to third base when Trevor Plouffe went on the disabled list, which kind of diminished Plouffe's trade value a little bit because he kind of had some value last year as well. But you know, the Twins were in contention; they're not going to move guys when they're in right. Contention. They're gonna they're gonna be buyers, yeah, not sellers. Exactly, and uh, so his trade value has diminished. And Park actually got sent uh, to Triple A this season, you know, to try to ease the transition from Korea to United States. So this is a complete different league. So those moves that he has made the past couple of years kind of have backfired. And that's why I said it. I'm not surprised that it happened, but the fact that the farm system has been kind of one of the strongest in the majors, well, in the minors, um, that's why I'm a little surprised by it. But, you know, we kind of, baseball has kind of turned into a win now league in a way. Exactly, I was so, I was going to say that because like having a great minor league and a farm system is obviously important because those are the guys you're building towards the future. But if they're not in the major leagues and really proving themselves and helping you win games, that doesn't really do much for me. Yeah, so it's like, what have you done for me lately? And exactly, that, that's why. That's why I think that was the whole point of him getting fired. Is this team's not playing well? And they they didn't take a step forward from last year because the Twins were kind of a surprise last year. You know, this time last summer, I remember covering a Twins and Tigers game around this summer, and you know they were an exciting team to watch. They're not the same team, no, as that as I saw in that field. So yeah, worst yeah. worst team in the AL, second worst team in the majors. Yes. Terry Ryan out as Twins general manager. Unfortunately for him, unfortunately for him, maybe he can find somewhere else to find and pick up a a home here in baseball and maybe the twins will have success without them now. So we're going to have to always update you here at the baseball podcast for the golden state media concepts podcast network. Yeah. And I think Terry Ryan, I think he will find another front office job. Um, I don't know if it'll be a GM um, or, but he will, he will get one. He will, he will get a front office job. You can't disregard his track record. Yeah, I, I agree. You, you can't. I agree. So we're going to take our first break here, the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We're coming out of the break talking about the L.A. Dodgers and ace Clayton Kershaw, who is still on the DL. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Alongside Jeremiah, I'm Ben. We do have two matinee games going on currently in the major leagues. We have the Baltimore Orioles ahead 2-1 over the New York Yankees. That game is in the sixth inning. And a surprise here, Jeremiah, a team we're going to be talking about just in this segment. We have the Dodgers with a 6-2 lead over the Nationals. Oh, okay. Lighting up Steven yes. Strasburg. Yes, he was going for 14-0. Yeah, yes, so in, in six innings, he's given up seven hits, six earned runs. He does have 10 strikeouts, so it's not bad. But he is looking like he's going to have his first defeat of the season. Justin Turner's homered off him twice and has five RBIs. Okay. Well, speaking of the Dodgers, it uh, looks like Clayton Kershaw has suffered a setback. Yes, during his rehab assignment and uh, over last weekend, over the last weekend. And Dave, manager Dave Roberts said, you know, he hopes, he hopes, that, you know, the ace can come back to the team. But he might require, but Kershaw might require surgery and he could miss the rest of the season yeah so wow. it, it, dave dave roberts did mention after last night's game that surgery would not be out of the question it is a thought so kershaw did have like an epidural shot in his rehab stint it made his back feel a lot better so they were hoping that this would really get him back up to the major leagues and then he maybe pushed the envelope a little too much 
there, Jeremiah, and he maybe injured that back more. The question I have is his back was feeling better, and then he re-injured it. So did he re-injure it to the point where it originally was, to where you have like a, a month injury? Or did he push it even more where you could see him out maybe for the whole season, maybe until September? If he has surgery, you got to think he's going to be out all year. Yeah, if I think he kind of pushed it to the point where it even hurt even more. You know, like, because it sounds like, you know, Roberts is not even optimistic about him coming back. Like he says, he's hopeful. But when you think your guy's going to come back, you don't say he's hopeful to come back. Like he sounds like he's going to be out for a while and possibly the season, which is kind of a blow to the Dodgers rotation, even though they're only, uh, I think, four or five games back of the Giants. Four and, and a half right now. Half, yeah. uh, behind the San Francisco Giants and the National League West who haven't had a They've win. had their fair share of unfortunate a, events since who, the All-Star break as well. Who haven't had a win since the All-Star break, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, we'll cover them on our next show. Yeah, Don't yeah, worry. That, 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 having a, that kind of a, plays a part of how the Dodgers are keeping pace with the Giants, but still, like I just don't think they can... The guys that they have in the rotation right now, because there's some other injuries, other injuries that the rotation has had, you know, Hanjan Ryu, he's got just put back on a DL. Uh, Alex Wood, he's going to get surgery. He's probably going to miss eight weeks, most. Uh, and yeah, the the guys that they had right now, uh, I just don't think they're gonna they're gonna keep this up uh, because they have guys on the in here that can't really get a lot of innings. Uh, maybe Kenta Maeda, maybe can be that guy. Um, he's probably the ace of the staff right now. Which is which kinda, it, for a rookie that's kind of scary. It's kind of it's kind of scary to think, and they just brought back up who Urias, who they're keeping his innings down. So yeah, he, bullpen, he pitched he pitched in the game today against against the Nationals. He went four innings, giving up just one run. So that's not a bad start for the nineteen yeah, year old. Yeah, and, but whenever Urias starts, he starts at least four or five innings every game, and the bullpen's going to have to have, have to clean to, up. Have to clean up. Not only that. Their bullpen is going to be kind of worn out now since some of the stars are not, especially Kershaw, are not on the rotation. It's like I'm more kind of worried about their bullpen now because of how used up they're going to be um, going for the home stretch towards the season. And, yeah, what I'm, and fighting for a playoff spot as well. So That's what I was going to say. What I'm worried about is with Kershaw not being there, how they can contend for a playoff spot. Without Kershaw pitching... Their win loss is minus two, so they're two games under 500 without Kershaw pitching. With Kershaw pitching, they're almost untouchable. He's 13 and two. He, they win almost every single game. Or I'm sorry, he's 11 and two. He win. They win almost every single game he pitches in. His ERA is 1.79. He's only given up nine walks, strikeouts 145. He he's literally irreplaceable. So you don't have Kershaw. You don't really have anyone who can step up and pitch and replace anyone. How are you going to be able to contend in the NL West? You're four and a half back of the Giants, and they've been struggling, so that's keeping the Dodgers there. But you got to think the Giants are a great team. They're going to turn things around and start playing better. They still do have a lead in the wild card race by a game. So they, And there is two spots there, but there's a ton of teams that are fighting for wild card spots. You have Miami Marlins. You have the Mets, the Cardinals, the Pittsburgh Pirates are all within three games with the Dodgers. Without Kershaw and without any real pitching, you got to think that they might struggle and sort of slumble there and not be able to hold on to a wild card spot. The one thing I would say for the Dodgers is if they're going to start winning games and try and build towards a postseason, I think they definitely need to make an acquisition in the in the trade deadline coming up on August first. And maybe what they need to do is add a hitter. They maybe need to do what the Red Sox are doing and win games, scoring a ton of runs, not really pitching well because they don't have that pitcher. Like the Red Sox beat the Giants last night 11-7. to Hanley Ramirez had three home runs, six RBIs, a great game. But if you score seven runs if you're the Giants, you got to think you're going to win a lot of games because that's strong pitching. The Giants, or not the Giants, I'm sorry, the Dodgers don't have that. So maybe they need to do kind of what the Red Sox have been doing is winning games with their offense and not with their pitching. Okay, I, I kind of see where you're coming, about, uh, coming from, but if they're going to make moves in the trade deadline, I think they need to either get a starter and some bullpen help. Because well, yeah, no matter what they the, do, the, they need something. Yeah, I don't, I don't see them gaining. I don't know how getting a hitter will help 
you know, the team. Because I know they got Corey Seager there, who's probably going to win Rookie of the Year in the National League. Yeah, he's he's statistically their best hitter. He's hitting over 300. He leads them in home runs. He's, he's their best hitter, in my opinion, right now. Yeah, and then, well, they're actually thinking of trading Yasuo Puig as well. So... I Which he, he could have a lot of trade value. He He's could. a young player. He's really good. Great hitter. Great fielder. He's got a cannon of an arm. Good on the base pads. I would not be surprised. That would that'd be a huge trade. But there's always that one big summer trade every year that happens. Well, it better be a blockbuster trade. Because I remember Dodgers had that huge trade a couple of years ago when they got Adrian Gonzalez, Carl Crawford. You know, they traded him for, uh, I think, Hanley. Was yeah. also involved in that Hanley win in that trade and as the well. The trade with the Red Sox. Yes, yes. That so that was that huge blockbuster deal. So I don't see them getting a hitter if they're trying to trade one of their notably their most like uh, biggest name hitters that they have in this lineup. So I don't see them trading for a hitter if they're trying to trade one away. So that's why I think they're going to focus more on pitching this summer to keep him into keep him in games. And not lose them than just trying to outscore everyone. I just don't think they have the team to outscore anyone like they used to have. Yeah, a couple of years ago, you yeah. could say they might have had the best lineup. Yeah, yeah, arguably, yeah, you could have said they had the most dangerous lineup in the league. And but I think that pitching is probably their most important like a uh, trade target this summer as as we're approaching it in a couple of weeks. Yeah, for, for me, the Dodgers, I, even without Kershaw, even if they do get to a playoff spot, I don't really see much they're going to be having to go against the Cubs, the Giants, the Nationals, who ironically they're beating right now. Maybe if the Mets can get a wild card spot, the Cardinals, Miami Marlins, you know, whomever comes out, I still don't see them winning a playoff series because they have no pitching. When you look at the playoffs— you, I don't see them winning the wild card game. Well, in a one in a one game playoff, yeah. really anything can happen. But in a series, is when your pitching really needs to stand out for you. The Dodgers don't have that, so I don't see how they could win a playoff series against really anybody. Yeah. So I, I would say I would say give Kershaw the surgery, shut him down for the year, and build for the future. Exactly. That's why I said I think. Well, if you want to take that approach, then just don't make any moves. You know, maybe just don't make any. But if you yeah. want to win and make the playoffs now, because I know. Dodger fans, they want, they want to win now. Yeah, they're and hungry. They're, they're hungry. hungry. They've been hungry for years, and trust me, I I have friends that are Dodger fans. They're hungry for a World Series. I don't, they're not going to get it this year, but if they if you want your team, like the front office, if you want your team to compete in October, you got to make moves for that rotation because. At the rotation, they got Kenta Maeda, who's, like I said, he's probably their best pitcher right now on the rotation. Uh, Bud Norris, who they got in a draft from the Atlanta Braves. Scott Kazmir, he's been up and down. Yeah, he, and uh, he, he's definitely on the downside of his career, yeah, Kazmir. Exactly, he, and he's not getting any younger. And you got Brandon McCarthy, who had Tommy John surgery last year, and Julio Urias. Um, I know he's regarded as the phenom, quote unquote. He's still but, so young, though. But he's only 19, and I don't see him. Can't like, expect, you can't expect him to yeah, to lead your team. You exactly. Know? He's not going to give you like seven or eight innings. Man, they're going to keep his innings down. That's why I never understood why they brought him up. Maybe I would have. Yeah, I should I, give I, him well, a little taste. Well, you know? I would have understood it why. If they would have put him in the bullpen right now, then I would have understood why they're bringing him up, but you're bringing him up to start. So. That's why I didn't really understood they they caught him up this week. Um, I understood why they caught him up, you know, when he first did, you know, a couple months ago. But when you're trying to, when you need help in the bullpen, then maybe I would put maybe who your rise right there and probably make a move for like maybe a solid third, fourth starter, and I would just go from there, you know. Like, I would put your rise in a bullpen if you're trying to keep his innings down in any way. So yeah, just, that's the just most, my perspective. The most he would go is three, sometimes maybe four exactly. innings. So yeah, yeah, I agree. So we're gonna have another commercial break here at the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Gonna be coming back from the break with Prince with Prince Fielder news. Just recently went to the DL, as well as former AL signing Award winner Felix Hernandez coming off the DL. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back at the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. 
Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. We're living life to the fullest and the healthiest here at the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Jeremiah, alongside myself, Ben, are at the baseball podcast. Jeremiah also does the football podcast. I do the sports podcast and the soccer one. Moving on here, we're on baseball, though. So, Jeremiah, we're moving into our last segment of this show, talking about Prince Fielder, first of the Texas Rangers, just recently going to the DL. Yes. Yes. He, uh, yeah, he he was going to go – I think he's going to go under further testing, um, and we'll probably know more about his status on Friday. Uh, he underwent an MRI on Tuesday, but he's probably going to miss the rest of the season with a herinated disc. E. Yeah. Yeah, no. his yeah. neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. his neck. Wait, and <laughs> remember, he also had that huge neck injury that kept him out uh, in 2014. Yeah, this the one the injury he has right now, the herniated disc, is the same. Yeah. It's virtually the same surgery he had two years ago. So yeah. he's probably going to have the same surgery. Probably. And I, I kind of think Prince Filler's career is. Kind of coming to an end here. Yeah, I think he's definitely on the downward slope yeah. of his career, but I think for sure, especially with a neck injury, that's one of those body parts that you have to be so cautious with, especially with the same thing as the back with Kershaw. But with the neck, I think Prince Fielder's probably done for the season. That's a huge blow for the Rangers. Do you think he's his career's done? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. You, you got to look at people like Peyton Manning. He had a neck injury and he came back in a, really a more physical contact sport in football. So. I wouldn't necessarily jump to that conclusion, but I'd say you've definitely seen the best out of Prince Fielder already. Yeah, I don't like like looking at his uh, stats from his career. Um, I don't see him going like fifty home runs like he did in two thousand seven. Yeah, forty six and two thousand. I don't see anyone getting fifty home runs. <laughs> not not anymore. It, it's like it's like it doesn't happen anymore. Right? Yeah, pitchers dominate. Now, yeah, exactly. You know, like. It's hard for people to really – 40 home runs is looked at like, oh, you had a monster oh, exactly. season. Yeah, and then like he had like he had 23 home runs last season. I just don't see Prince Filler getting that many uh, long balls anymore. Um, yeah, like this this season so far he's only hit eight. Yeah. And he's batting 212, 44 RBIs. He's having one of his worst seasons of his career. Yeah, and – even if he would have stayed healthy, I think it probably would have been the worst of his career. So yeah, this is this is a huge loss for the Rangers because we I feel like we're kind of the kiss of death here on the podcast because yeah. we talked about the Giants and now they're zero and five since the All Star break. <laughs> yeah. We talked about how good the Rangers are, having the best record in the American League, and now over their last eighteen games, Jeremiah, they're four and fourteen. And not only that, they haven't had a starting pitcher other than Cole <laughs> Hamels win a game in three weeks. Wow, that is that is amazing. Well, remember they have we, we we literally are a kiss of death. I think, uh, and well, maybe you are. I'm not, but oh, well, I, we both talk <laughs> about it. I mean, come on. I, I think we're probably the kiss of death to the Dodgers too, because we talked about Kershaw, and yet they keep getting hurt and hurt. We are serious. We're just gonna stop talking about every team that's doing great. The Cubs we talked about, and they went l sort of limped into the All Star yeah, break. They, yeah. Yeah, they did. We're a kiss of death here. Yeah, okay. Well, but anyways, maybe. With, well, we talked about the twins. Maybe they're gonna do. They're gonna do worse great. Now. They're gonna watch do them great. do great. Like <laughs> do an opposite. They're gonna have. They're gonna have a great second half. Watch. They're gonna have like the best because, second half record of any team because of what? Because we talked about man. If they, man, you guys in Minnesota, if the twins ended up having the biggest second half in history since the A's did it in. 32,000s. So you can thank me and Ben here. That's that's right. That, but, so. Okay, so anyways, how big of a loss is Prince Fielder to this Texas Rangers lineup, especially with how bad they've been recently trying to push towards playoffs? Well, if you remember Fielder starts his season, he started so slow, and they're thinking maybe he is the weak link of the lineup. Of lineup. But he has put together a couple of solid games uh, since then. And, you know, when, you know, heading to the stretch of the season here, you kind of need, like, your veterans there. And Prince Fielder's a veteran. He's not going to get, like, 
he's not gonna have that three home runs a game, but he can he he does provide leadership for that team, and I think it's important for him to be there when you're making that playoff push. So I think it is kind of a huge loss in that way. But like lineup, like lineup, I don't know if it's regarded as a as a loss. I think he might be replaceable at this point of his career. Okay, but definitely still he's still a presence. Exactly, just his like name, his, presence, his ability, his presence is a huge loss. But like his bat isn't really like he he his bat is pretty much replaceable at this point in the season. But his presence, you can't replace that. You can't replace that at all. Yeah, he, I'd say he's definitely been one of the best hitters and home run hitters of of the this this last five six years so probably this era honestly probably this era especially when he was in milwaukee he was just yeah he was out. him and braun together was just a nasty that was combo. that was really unfair <laughs> that was yeah really that, unfair. that so i mean for the rangers i think it's a, i think it's definitely a loss because they need to try and find some way to turn things around and return to the form they had earlier in the year so maybe with the trade deadline approaching we got like just a few like a little under two weeks left before that that happens and closes. Maybe they can make a move before then, try and push towards the the playoffs. I definitely think they're going to be buyers and not sellers because they are looking pretty good in the AL West right now. Yeah, but they, they do have, need to turn yeah. it around. Not only they do have more injuries on this team, like they just put Senshu Chu on the disabled list not too long ago as well, and he was a really good hitter last year for the Rangers, and he was having a solid season this year as well. So replacing Fielder and Chu is going to be huge, and I think, I think they're going to probably maybe look for a bat. And the trade yeah, line. I would I would yeah. say a bat. They they currently have a three and a half game lead over the Astros in the AL West, but they're they're still in a good position for even a wild card spot, yeah. so a playoff berth. So now moving on to Felix Hernandez, Jeremiah. He just had his first start coming off the DL recently. Yes, he did. He sure did. He uh, came. He had his first start this week after. Being placed on the disabled list in May um, to a right calf. Yeah, so he, he struggled in his in his first start since coming off the DL against the White Sox on Wednesday. He gave up five runs on ten hits in six and two thirds innings. He was on the DL since the end of May with a calf strain. Yes. So yeah, he's he's currently four and four in the season, ERA of three point two three. That's really not too bad. A, a guy who's kind of. I think you've definitely seen the best out of Felix Hernandez. I, I look at his his Cy Young Award winning season when he really won it based off his ERA because his record, I believe, it was like fourteen and thirteen, fourteen and fourteen, somewhere around there. So he he didn't really do it because he had a great great statistical wins and loss, but he did it because of his ERA. And even at three point two three, that's still pretty respectable. Yeah, really. And uh, I think having Felix Hernandez back is pretty huge for the Mariners as well. Um, you know, they did have a kind of like a good start to the season. You know, they kind of derailed a little bit, you know, in the AOS standings. But having Felix Hernandez, you know, that's a that's a huge deal to have your ace back, you know? Yeah, definitely. Not not only because of his pitching ability, but the leadership he provides. It really could mean a lot to, to the Mariners. They're and currently six and a half back in exactly. the AOS, West, which is still in – they're still in striking distance. Which is – we were just talking about Prince, Prince Fielder and the Rangers. Um, you know, they had all these injuries. Maybe this is uh, Felix Hernandez. Having him back could probably lead to the Mariners, you know, going on a little bit of a run here to kind of like widen the gap a little bit or close the gap for that matter. Yeah, they still do have some great leaders. Robinson Cano at second base. They're five and a half back in the wild card, and they're, they're battling a number of teams. So I'd say the best thing for them to do is maybe try and keep keep pushing forward, try and get closer to, to Houston, try and get closer to Texas, battle for that AL West because there's so many tough, tough teams in the American League. For the wild cards, you have the Orioles and Blue Jays who are on top. The Red Sox currently on top of the AL East. So I, I think the Mariners are definitely going to need to get the best out of Felix Hernandez down the stretch. Yes, and I do agree with you on that. You do. All right, so does this conclude our show? Okay. This can, this right. does conclude right. the first episode of today. Okay, okay. So we're going to be talking about a number of things in our next episode. Jeremiah, why don't you tell everyone? Yeah, we're going to talk about some teams that have started the second half really well. And we're going to talk about some teams that had a terrible start to, to the start, second half. To the second half, and we're going to probably preview some weekend series coming up, and we're going to preview some pitching matchup this weekend. Yes, we will do that in our next episode. 
And as always, you can follow us on Twitter at GSMC underscore baseball. And you can follow us on Instagram at the same handle. You can like us on Facebook at Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. You can also subscribe, listen to our show on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, and YouTube. We have two episodes every week, Thursday, Friday, and it's free. And it's free 99. Free 99. Yeah, go get it. Go yeah, get also, it, we're on. Listen. We're on our homepage for our podcast network is gsmcpodcast.com. You can find the portfolio of all the podcasts on there. They're all great. There's sports-related stuff and non-sports-related stuff. So no matter what your niche, your listening niche is, we have you covered. Niche. There's also a coming soon tab yeah. where you can find a lot of podcasts that are starting up soon. Hopefully end of this year, early next year. More heard, sports heard, stuff, heard, but there's uh, also some other things too. I heard a... Uh, 2017, most likely it's going to happen when more, those shows are going to be released. That's okay. what I've heard. Yeah, there's there's a lot of them on there that I'm interested in. Like, there's a there's a video games one. There's the crazy stuff I saw on YouTube one. Yeah, that I feel that like, made me laugh. That, I feel like that one name. would be pretty interesting. That's a great name. You probably YouTube. find some pretty funny things yeah. on there. So definitely a lot of podcasts that I will be listening to as well, and I hope you do too. Yeah, I, really, I, I laughed at that name, uh, Crazy Things I Saw on YouTube. That's yeah, a good I'm actually, one. I'm actually kind of interested in doing that one, too. I don't, I don't think anyone's it. really in the podcast game is really doing stuff like that. No, so that's no. that's a good, okay. that's a good well, concept. Well, maybe they might now since they heard our show. I hope they don't <laughs> steal our thunder, steal our idea. And uh, we also have a show called America's Still Beautiful, uh, which is kind of like something I'm interested in doing as well. Um, hope, uh, I don't know if I'll do it, but who knows? Maybe okay. just maybe this might it's just stick me doing sports stuff. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, this concludes our show, and thanks for listening, guys. Always. And, yeah, always here at the Golden State Media Conference Baseball Podcast. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. For Jeremiah, I am Ben signing off here at the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We'll be back with the next episode, so make sure you listen, and we thank you for listening. Have a good day, guys.